morning, everybody. My name is Alvaro Castaño. I'm one of the co-chairs at Conexión in celebration of the Hispanic Heritage Month, which started on September 15th. Conexión is collaborating with four Hispanic restaurants in Cincinnati. Our goal is to unveil the richness and depth of the Hispanic cuisine. The fact that we have over 150 Hispanic restaurants in Cincinnati alone speaks for itself. Most of us love to eat tacos. If we didn't have a taco in the city, you have all kinds of flavors and shapes and sizes of tacos. However, tacos are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Hispanic cuisine. Through this video series, we're hoping to show you how amazing this cuisine is while promoting some local Hispanic restaurants. Today we're here at Mace in OTR and we're here with Angel Batista, the owner of Mace. Angel, how are you? Doing great, doing Excellent. great. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for opening up the door to Cincinnati Bell. Uh, Angel also happens to be one of our customers, so we appreciate your business very much. No, thank you, thank you. Angel, let's talk about Mace for a minute. So, what does the name Mace mean? And, and tell us a little bit about the history of this restaurant, how it came about uh, in Cincinnati. You know, it's been now four, four years, almost four years. Um, I would say a little bit over four years with development of the concept and everything, but. Um, you know, with, with Mace here in, uh, in the neighborhood. Um, the idea of the name Mace actually comes from uh, a little bit of a tricky aspect of uh, utilizing a name that will mean the same in English and Spanish. It's really easy for, um, you know, uh, uh, the American side or English speaking, you know, culture to actually pronounce it. The same thing with, you know, maize uh, in Spanish. Um, that was one of the factors. Second factor was, we wanted to work uh, with um, a gluten-free uh, base. Um, it just happened that maize have been uh, uh, around a Latin American culture for, you know, as, as we did our, our, our research for, you know, a thousand years, uh, where, you know, our Indians even in Latin America, Central America, you know, were utilizing maize, you know, to create uh, masa. Um, and uh, that's where you were talking about tacos, you know, one way it represented tacos in a thinner version than in Venezuela, for example, in Colombia, uh, we were dealing with arepas, you know, and the same thing with our cachapa. So uh, that, then, that then took us to uh, trying to find an approach where it was going to be easy for our guests to be exposed to something new. Excellent. So um, one could then say that Mace is in essence a Venezuelan restaurant? You know, the, we are a Latin American restaurant. Uh, we happen to be very influenced by uh, Venezuelan culture and also by the Puerto Rican culture, maybe even from Puerto Rico as well. Uh, it's something I, I, we can't shake. You know, we have, it, has to, it follows me wherever I go. But it's, it's key that, you know, everybody understands that there's so many um, influences from food uh, that come from other areas of the world. So we have a European uh, background from the Spaniards that you know, that, that came in during colonization at the same time that we have a very big, you know, a strong African uh, uh, background. First of all, thank you for bringing this type of food to Cincinnati. You're welcome. I absolutely love the food at this place. It's fantastic. So if you haven't tried it, please come to Mace. It's unbelievable. Anything you can tell us about um, the food that you guys will be preparing for us today? Uh, today we're going to be making a pabellón criollo. Uh, it is a national dish, as we like to call it, from Venezuela. It was a dish that was, you know, came about from the experience of slaves actually receiving leftovers of food. That's why the, the dish is supposed to be eating all together. The colors itself represent, uh, uh, you know, that flag and that, that culture, uh, um, you know, mixture that, that, you know, to us is something to, be, you know, something to be proud of, something that makes us who we are today and we celebrate with that dish. So. Uh, that's really amazing to me thinking about how much culture can, and food through culture can mm -hmm. unite us, connect everybody together. So all this talk about food is making me hungry. Are we ready to do some I cooking? I know, let's do it. Let's Vamos do it. I'm a ready. Cocinar. A cocinar. <laughs> All right, so here we are back in the kitchen now. This is the most exciting part of the day for me anyways. Uh, Angel, who do we have here today? We have our chef, Jessica Baston. Jessica's been with us now for uh, a little over three years since, since you know, our, our star. She earned her Puerto Rican star, you know, by now. And uh, yeah, it's been, uh, uh, you know, key to, to ensuring that, you know, our operation actually flows the way that, that it needs to, you know, through our food. So. Well, hello, Jessica. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm super excited to be here with you today. I know I'm in good hands. 
I talked to Angel quite a bit, and he talks about you uh, in a very high level, very high fashion. You're a great chef. Thank you. We know that. Uh, we happen to have an acquaintance through my daughter, so I'm so excited to, to know that she knew you, and that's why we're here today as well. Happy to have you guys. Uh, thank you. So what are we cooking today, and, and what can you tell me about uh, maybe you know, the history of this dish? Uh, what do you enjoy most about making this dish for yeah. us today? So I'm going to do the papillon criollo, which is Venezuela's national dish. Um, it you know goes it dates back to maybe the 16th century. They've been doing it for years, but what it really brings together is um, the different cultures. So. Uh, it used to use a lot of leftover beans, leftover rice, whatever leftover veggies you have around. Um, sometimes the tougher cuts of meat um, are broken down, stewed down. So um, really it's utilizing what you have around you. So you see it throughout the Caribbean. Um, it kind of translates. So I start my beans um, with the very traditional red pepper, cilantro, garlic, do it from its basis, um, as well as the meat. Um, our carne machada takes about five to six hours to cook. We do it low and slow really break that meat down and bring every, all the flavors together. So let's talk a, a little bit about um, what are the ingredients that would be part of the pavillon criollo that you're making for us today? So first you start with your white rice. It's just a traditional basic white rice that represents the um, English settlers that came into Venezuela. Um, and then we work onto the beans. Like I said, it is a low and slow process. I hand dice all of the veggies. You add in the sazon, that garlic. Um, tomato, the different sofrito flavorings, um, and we cook that. We bring the be or cook the beans down, um, and basically um, turn that what I call a little nice chocolate sauce. When you see that sazon and the tomato mixing Fantastic. together, it really it really matches perfectly. And then you finish it with the carne machada. Um, like I said, that's low and braised. Um, we cook it about all day until the flavors hit right, and it's just falling apart right off the bone. Um, and then you have your uh, sweet plantains. So you have your ripened plantains. Obviously. So these are the plantains? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we have our ripened sweet plantains that we uh, cook off. We have them nice, brown, and crispy. Um, I really focus heavily on my plating of the dish. So um, we try and bring an elevated style of plating so that you eat with your eyes as well as, as your, your stomach. We start frying these off lightly. So this, in essence, will become a side dish for the pavillon criollo, is that correct? Yes, I always, they're always served with uh, the sweet plantains. Um, we do them on top, um, but you see plantains all throughout our menu, within, whether it's sweet plantains, the mariquitas, um, mofongo, we are heavily peeling these uh, plantains, for sure. <laughs> it sounds great. So this is the beef, Jessica, that has been cooking for how many hours? Uh, between four to five hours. Oh um, we God. let it do its thing. Um, sometimes if you find a tougher cut of meat, I use a beef chuck roast. Mm. Uh, but like I said, you have the carrots, onions, peppers. Um, we really oh. bring those aromatics to life and then just roast it low and slow. Um, oh my God, you can see from here it just... how it's just falling apart and, exactly. and not just that, but how well it smells probably from the sofrito exactly. that has been used as the base. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, to order or for um, our Babion Criollo, I'm going to take a little bit of the sofrito here and um, add just a little bit more flavor to it. Oh just my God! Enhance so it's, it even more. So it's flavor heaven. What we're talking exactly. about? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we're not missing in that here yeah, for sure. Mm. So I have my carne machada here that I'm going to just reheat as it's been braising for hours. We uh, marinate it with our sofrito. Um, that's a base that we use heavily throughout um, all of our meats, the chicken and the carne. Um, we always have our sofrito uh, marinated within it. So, so when we talk about carne mechada, is See. that uh, carne mixed with some other uh, types of meat or, or is it the sofrito mix? It's the, the sofrito mix. So okay. I braise it low so with the onions and peppers, but then as well, um, we take our blended sofrito, which is um, a cooked off uh, marinated peppers mm -hmm. um, and onions, so you get double the flavor, double the sazon, as oh you call it. God. So it really hits home. And then I have my beans that I've been stewing over here, and obviously you want to get that chocolatey, rich texture right here. The beans leak out, and you just oh. have it marinated perfectly together. Right they there. look beautiful. So, so you know, when we talk about a sofrito, can you help me understand? You know, what is that, and, and how is it used? Yeah. So a sofrito is used um, in a lot of French cooking. You hear your mirepoix or your base, but you have 
a lot of heavy aromatics. Um, so you have um, your onions, your carrots, your, your garlic, all of those things that accentuate a dish. They bring a lot of flavor, they bring the, the color to it as well. So a sofrito is just straight aromatic. Some people use tomatoes, some use onions, peppers. Um, it depends on what base you prefer. My base is just straight veggie, so we use the uh, onions, the peppers, the garlic, um, and then um, it is implemented into every dish. So, like I, uh, sofrito, I almost as related as the same word as uh, sazon. So when you have that sofrito, or that sazon, or that flavor, that's that's what really adds it to it. So I don't hesitate to add it to anything. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds great. So this is the part where uh, all the ingredients, the rice, the beans that have been steaming for hours. Uh, the, the beef also that has been uh, cooking for about five six hours in the sofrito gets assembled into the actual dish the pabellón criollo stay tuned so we elevate the dish and we make it uh, easy to eat guys as well so so far uh, we we're ready to assemble the dish Correct. we have the rice Correct. right what's next so i first layered my rice into my ring mold i'm going to set that base press it down really tight so that it holds everything together and then I'm going to bring over our stewed beans. Again, these, this is another item that takes a few hours to cook. You, uh, time is uh, always better for it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm going to, I don't want to lose all of the liquid, but I don't want it to stain my beans. So I'm going to eliminate some of that here. And I'm going to layer the beans next on top. So, so far it's beans uh, with rice, which is a staple of any Latin American food. Yes, like I said, it translates through all, all throughout the Caribbean. Um, just maybe some of the recipes might fluctuate, but it's always uh, what you have on hand. And so it used to be called, uh, what I've seen as like a leftovers, um, but uh, it's become so popular that, you know, everybody eats it on its own. So then I'm going to add my carne machada on top. So this again is the carne that has been cooking for five, six hours. Correct. That after all that cooking with the sofrito is falling off the bone mm -hmm. uh, just by looking at it. Yes, okay. <laughs> and once we separated that, we take it again and we add some more sofrito, our blended sofrito into it, and then okay. um, just add a little bit more flavor. And then I always finish it off with our plantains. I place them on top right here. Once your ring mold is set. Oh, wow. Queso fresco. That okay. always goes on top. And a little greenery to accentuate it. And right there Voila. we have our Pabellón Criollo. So here it is, folks. The Pabellón Criollo at Maze. Uh, this is a dish that, as you've learned today, is not something you can reproduce in 30 minutes or one hour. So the 180 from fast food, it, it took Jessica four to five hours. She was probably up early this morning to make this for us. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Thank you, Jessica. This looks amazing. Thank you. All right, so here we are. Uh, again, thank you, Angel and Jessica, for having us here today. Uh, today we have the Pabellón Criollo, which is, as I understand it, a, a very popular Venezuelan dish that takes quite a bit of time to cook. So here is the presentation. Uh, Jessica, you can tell us again what's in this beautiful tower in the center of the plate. Again, it's uh, Venezuela's national dish. Um, so it has our white rice, the stewed black beans, and the carne machada that's been cooking for four to five hours, as well as the sweet plantain. So what it represents is the uh, multiple different nationalities and colors um, that are indigenous to Venezuela and that make up uh, the country. So it's a great representation to bring it all together. For it sure, sure looks like it and you know I really love the idea of uh, sweet and savory together with the plantains, uh, the meat, the beans, the rice. It looks like a phenomenal dish so thank you for having us. Angel, what else do you have to say? What would you like to add? You know, I certainly want to invite everybody say thank you first and foremost uh, for you guys coming, you know, here uh, today, spending some time with us. I want to say thank you to Cincinnati Bell and make sure that, that you know everybody knows we're we're uh, they're welcome here and that uh, we would love to you know share our concept and our culture and our, our great food and drinks uh, with them. Uh, great place, obviously. You know, we have a great uh, cocktail menu, uh, very influenced uh, from from uh, Caribbean and Latin American background. Uh, just like our food and then uh, we just added 
um, uh, about a month ago now, a good, uh, uh, decent selection, about 10 new wines uh, that are coming from Spain. So again, invite everybody uh, to come down and thank you so much for uh, also all the support. I happen to be a, a, a client, a customer of Cincinnati Bell in both of the restaurants. Um, and you guys have been doing a phenomenal job always for us, so I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We love the partnership as well. So let's talk about the wine real quick. You said this is coming now from an, uh, a fairly young winery in Cincinnati called Key Wines. Is Key that Wines, correct? Key Wines, wine distributor, yes. And, yes. and they are, uh, you know, particularly they are bringing wines from Spain, and you guys are now collaborating with them to yes. bring those wines. Yes, it's okay. something that we always wanted to do with the concept. Uh, was at the very beginning, actually hard to find and hard to uh, you know to achieve uh, because of the selection of the state. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're doing a great, great, phenomenal job bringing us uh, uh, really, really good wines right now to the area. And yeah, we we had to take the opportunity to uh, you know pair with our food. So. That's fantastic. So in this case, for Pavillon Criollo, you guys have recommended a, a full body red wine. Yes. Correct. Awesome. Well, let's let's give it a try, right? Good. Yeah. Absolutely. I can do the honors. Good. Good. Fantastic. Well, salud. salud. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Gracias. Thank you. All right, so this is the moment of the truth for the Pavillon Criollo. At Mace in OTR. Wow. That beef is unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. I want to invite Cincinnati Bowl to come over to Mace and try this immediately. Don't wait. <laughs> Fantastic food. Again, thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.